What's up Sarpa Squad, Tanner here and I'm back with another Ecosphere build. For this one I'll utilize materials that are typically used in the aquarium hobby to create a cool and unique Ecosphere. I've been getting a lot of requests to do one like this so I really hope you enjoy it. Let's get started with these items here. I have a standard latch top glass jar with a gasket, a piece of Malaysian driftwood and silicone. My goal is to attach the jar sideways on top of the driftwood. In doing so I had to position the jar in just the right location. I also used a bag of substrate to hold the jar in place. A few dabs of silicone were applied to where the jar rests on the wood. The jar was placed on top of the silicone and left to sit for 24 hours while everything cured. The end result being this neat little setup. The container is ready to go so let's start making the ecosphere. Like the majority of my builds, that's going to begin with an array of substrates. This one will utilize some clean topsoil, sea chem fluorite, aquarium gravel, and a mixture of sand. I started by covering the bottom of the jar with an even layer of topsoil. This will act as a great foundation of nutrients for the plants. Next up is the sea chem fluorite. This too is full of nutrients and perfect for a planted setup. I'm using this as my primary substrate layer, but as you can see it doesn't look very nice. We'll address that in just a moment. Let's move on to the hardscape. For this one I have a single Sierra U stone and a few twigs of manzanita driftwood. I didn't have much to work with, but simplicity is often the best way to go. Per usual, I started with the largest element, the stone. This will define where the other elements are placed. From there I worked in all of the wood. In doing so, I allowed the crevices of the stone decide where the sticks should be placed. I simply adjusted their orientation to create a sense of direction. After all was said and done, here's my preliminary scape. They're always subject to change, but I like the look of it. Then I removed the driftwood so they could be glued down with gel super glue. I used glue so I could easily retain the look of the scape. I'm using wood that's not waterlogged, which would inevitably float once the container is filled with water. If everything is glued together, it's much easier to work without ruining things. Then I capped everything off with some aquarium gravel. This was certainly the way to go because it looks much better than a layer of terracotta colored stones. Sand was then dispersed in the front of the scape and blended into the background. Accent stones were also placed on top of the sand for better texture. Here's the finalized scape, simple yet effective. Now we can get this thing planted. I have a variety of plants here including Rotala indica, Ludwigia repens rubin, Lucifalandra wavy green, Rotala walichi, Cryptocorn wenti bronze, and Elodia anacris. With something like this, it's easiest to plant from the back of the jar and work toward the opening, and that's exactly what I did. I didn't expect this part to be as challenging as it was. The stone obstructed my tools, which meant I had to do most of the planting by hand or with small tweezers. Naturally, that's easier said than done. After a lot of tedious work, I ended up with this. I think it turned out really well. At this point you're probably wondering how are we going to get it filled up with water. To do the job I got a 10 gallon tank, set the ecosphere in it, and slowly filled it up with water. Doing so allowed me to fill up the jar without disrupting anything. I should also mention that I'll repeat the same process when it comes time to do maintenance.
Once the tank was full of water, I tipped the ecosphere slightly to remove the air pocket. With that addressed, it could be closed and removed from the tank. And there you have it, the sealed aquarium ecosphere. I call it that because it's basically a nano aquarium placed into a sealed container which makes it more akin to an ecosphere. Overall I think it turned out quite well. That said, I would have liked to get it packed with more plants for that instant gratification. Unfortunately we'll have to give it some time to grow in before it really looks proper. Per usual my long term vision is for it to be loaded with a forest of plants. As for maintenance, it should be pretty minimal. Every now and again I'm going to have to trim the plants. Since I'll have to put it back in the 10 gallon tank to do so, it will simultaneously take care of any water changes. I'm not sure if I'll be able to stock it with anything because of how it's accessed, but I wouldn't be opposed to getting something like scuds or seed shrimp. I guess I'll have to see how this progresses long term though. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this one, and stay tuned for future builds just like this and beyond this one. I'll see you later Serpa Squad, take care and peace. 